All okay. right. All right. Today we're going to talk about choosing when to receive Social Security retirement benefits. Um, okay. And we're going to explore the variables to consider when you decide when I should start. Should I start a reduced benefit at age 62 or delay? And you can delay up to 70. We'll talk more about that. This is just a general exploration. Um, you, you may want to discuss your specific situation with a financial advisor, and I know Julie put here qualified. And the thing, one thing will tell you if they're qualified, if they say, if they were to say, listen, we want to sit down. Listen, Lisa, we want to sit down. We want to see what your assets are. Um, we want to talk about uh, not only what assets you have, um, how you're going to stay invested in retirement. We're going to look at the climate and see what kind of return rates can we expect. We're going to look at your cash flow, uh, cash flow situation. Um, so no one can really tell you, hey, hey, Lisa, you should start at 62, you should wait till 70, you should take them at 67. Really, if somebody's qualified, they're going to take a deep dive and really look at your situation. So our, our goal today is to give you some thoughts to consider, some things to explore. Um, and so that's what we hope today to do today. Um, and hopefully that will help you um, make more informed choices and make more informed uh, you know, make more informed questions. Okay, so one thing is very important to do um, is to set up your account on the Social Security Administration website. It's a great way to keep track and make sure they are um, accounting properly for your wages every year. It's a great way if you can go in and prepare preparation for this webinar. I went in and took a look at my account. Um, good to know that I still know the password. Um, and it's good to see exactly what I would get if I retired early, um, if I retired later, um, and what my survivors could get. So it's a very good idea to go in and create that account and to check because you don't want to wait until um, you're at retirement or, or we're getting wages for year, years and say, oh, back in 20 years ago, I don't think you had the proper amount that I made. So it's important to check and see and make sure. All right, so please consider doing that. Uh, sources for this, a lot of information from this for this webinar is from the Social Security Administration. They're the guys who, who do the, you know, administer the program, distribute the funds, so they're the source to go to. I also, uh, back in 2015, Dr. Marty Gillen did a webinar, a very good webinar on Social Security retirement benefits. The main reason we had to take that down is because some things have changed, especially in, uh, in regards to file and suspend was a big change that came about since she did that. Um, so that is why we are doing that again. But I used a lot of information from her slideshow as well as the Social Security Administration. And that is the place to go. Um, those are the websites I'm going to give you. Sometimes it's not easy to read their information, but they are the source. Because if you see other things on the web, um, you may find things that are outdated or incorrect. Okay, so when we talk about Social Security benefits, they include retirement benefits, survivor benefits, uh, divorced spouse. Uh, spouse can get uh, benefits um, if they haven't remarried and they were married for uh, 10 years. And there's also disability benefits. But today we're going to focus on retirement benefits and we will talk a little bit about survivor benefits. But we weren't, and Social Security is a huge topic. Um, you could easily spend hours and hours, but we're going to try to hit the high points of choosing when um, when to receive benefits. Okay, Social Security retirement benefits are impacted by how much you've earned. It's the highest 35 years. And um, Julie had a good point here. Um, you're, if you work longer and those are your high earning years, um, that could increase your benefit. Uh, I was looking back at mine. Um, Back in 82, I made a whopping $949 when I first started working, and it was many years before I, uh, you know, cracked the 10,000 mark. So as you see, your highest 35 is what's going to impact how much you get. Um, and so you want to think about that, and you do want to take a look. Um, what else impacts 
uh, your retirement benefits, the age at which you begin to collect. I want to give you a lot of information about that and whether you're still generating income. Um, before normal retirement age, and we'll talk about what normal retirement age, you'll also hear it referred to as full retirement age. Before that age, if you get Social Security benefits and you continue to work, your Social Security benefits may be reduced. So we're going to talk a little more about that. Okay. All right. So when to start Social Security retirement benefits? Like I said, that's not a, okay, this year, this year, this year. These are some of the factors to consider. At what age do you plan to stop earning income? Do you have other, other assets? If you have other assets, I mean investment type assets, um, or assets that have a chance to appreciate. Um, what rate of return do you expect to earn on those assets in retirement? And that's an important question because that'll go to how long do I want to delay or do I want to take it, um, take benefits now and not delay? And we'll show how Social Security benefits, they increase, they kind of add a return every year. Um, they grow if you don't take them early. And what is your life expectancy? And that is a really tough one. And that's the big one with financial planning is particularly for retirement planning. If we knew the date we were going to die, our calculations would be a lot more, um, be much more accurate. So with a lot of this, it's just doing the best you can, being as informed and taking some, some assumptions, uh, making some assumptions. And, and um, another thing I didn't put here is, again, what type your assets, do you want to leave assets to heirs as well? Okay, so some general things, uh, some things with social security, social, social, oops, sorry, we don't, social security retirement benefit options, sorry for the typo there. Um, some things we can think, do we want to take them, number one, early? Um, generally, that's age 62 in one month. Uh, do we want to have normal receipt of benefits? And that depends what normal receipt full retirement benefits are depends on date of birth and I'll show a sh chart here shortly or do I want to delay my receipt of benefits and you can delay up to age 70 and the amount you will receive increases then that you'll receive going forward so we'll talk about that and here is a chart from a social security publication it shows somebody who has a full retirement age of 66 and 2 months and so they, they, if they wait till 66 and two months, they receive what's called the full retirement benefit. That would be $1,300. But if you see to the left and to the right of that, they could start as early as 62 and they would receive $964. Or they can delay up till age 70 and they can receive $1,698. Um, so that's just a little thought to get us going and there's a publication there that you might want to check out okay and I put this chart I moved this chart two places um, it's here and I'm going to show it again but this is an important chart um, it used to be normal retirement age or full retirement age was age 65 but they changed that I don't remember when but they did uh, it's been maybe the 80s I, I don't recall but anyway the, the deal is this is that your retirement age is going to your normal retirement age is going to depend on your year of birth. Um, and you can find that here, and that's a good thing to know. So early starts at 62. Normal retirement age depends on where you fall on the left side of this chart. And do keep an eye on the chat box. Julie's putting in good information. Okay, um, deciding when to receive to start receiving benefits. Um, and as Julie says here, it's no perfect answer. Um, you have to consider your individual and family needs, current cash needs, your current health, your family longevity, sources of retirement income, the investment returns in on that, um, on your assets in retirement, and tax consequences. And we're gonna touch a little bit on a lot of these things. Um, and Julie, jump in if there's anything I'm missing here. Uh, should discuss more in depth. Um, Everything's good. Sounds good. Okay. So again, uh, and and all this being said, again, if you get to age 62 and you just you just can't work anymore, 
or, or your health is poor and you don't have other assets, then frankly, it, it becomes an easier calculation. It's just, I need the retirement benefits. So what's right or wrong for everybody is, is based on math, based on their situation. Um, so consider your situation. Okay. Um, and um, a good suggestion here, uh, and I think this was Julie's suggestion, create budgets for different ages for claiming benefits, which is a great idea. Um, how much do you spend annually, especially as you're getting close to retirement? It's a very good idea to get a very good fix on how much am I spending? Um, how much am I spending? Um, maybe factor in a little inflation. Um, how, think about how long do you Will you continue if, if you have a spouse or partner? You want to think about that. Estimate your Social Security benefit. And, and actually, you can estimate it or you can, like I said, open your account and you will see this is what they're projecting. Um, it is in today's dollars. So if it's a long way out, it's liable to it's, it'll grow. Um, what sources of income you have, cost of health care. We know that's a big one for a lot of folks and a big unknown right now because uh, we did a Medicare uh, doesn't start until age 65 unless you have a, a serious illness such as uh, terminal kidney failure or, or a few rare exceptions, but at 65. Um, uh, so what's your debt situation? So it's important to do that. And what I always recommend to people is that if they're getting really close to retirement, give it a little practice. Figure out what kinds of your paycheck is going to look like in retirement, what kind of income sources you're going to have, and do a little practice. See if you can live on that uh, for a while. So um, all those things are important to think about. Okay, so Social Security retirement benefits. We, can say, we said one option was to receive it early, which means age uh, 62. And here they say, so at age 62 or before normal retirement age. So um, that would be early receipt of benefits. So for some folks, if it's age 67, you would receive it anywhere between age 62 and 67. Do be aware, though, if you're receiving Social Security benefits and you're planning on working, your Social Security benefit will be reduced. And here it gives, this is the number in 2017, um, you can earn up to Sixteen thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars, um, but then if you earn above that and you're taking um, early receipt of benefits before your normal retirement age in that chart, you will have one dollar deducted for every two dollars you earn. Now, the year you reach normal retirement age, it goes up to one dollar for every three dollars. And do know, I make a little note here, uh, a widower or a widower may be eligible beginning at age 60 for reduced benefits. And we'll talk a little more later uh, about um, widower, widower benefits, widower, widower benefits. Okay, how much are benefits reduced for early retirement? Okay, and here's a bunch of numbers here, but the idea is to show you that they're reduced depending on the month you start. So, um, if you retire early, for the first 36 months of that early, the early retirement, it's five ninths of one percent. After the 36 months, um, it's five twelfth of one percent. And here's an example: so benefits start at age 62, but the normal retirement is 67. So they started 60 months, five years early, 60 months early. For the third first um, 36 months, the calculation is 5 ninth of 1%, plus they add 5 twelfth of 1% times the other 24 months, and that would be a 30% reduction. And know, and we'll talk a little more about it later, that the benefit for the surviving widow, widow or widower will also be reduced unless they're caring for a qualifying child. And we are not going to go into that, but if somebody is caring for a qualifying child or has a child, that is um, under a uh, certain age and it comes to mind, I think it's under 16. I, I don't know for sure, I'd have to look that up. But if there is a child involved, there are benefits for a minor child. Um, but um, the moral I think with this is to know that the benefits um, do are reduced based on a monthly calculation, not on a yearly calculation. 
Okay, and one thing, um, okay, so this is redundant slide, so it's just repeating what I just said, but I wanted to flow in because you know that it, in the um, in the year you do reach normal retirement age, there is an, a different amount. It's called an annual exempt amount, which is, is so, whoops, went the wrong way. Okay, so you take early retirement age, retirement, you can't, you make over $16,920. You're over that amount of money, your uh, benefits are reduced. But in the year you reach normal retirement age, it's a little different. The amount you can make that year goes up, and that amount is what you see there on your screen. It goes up to $44,880. And they only count earnings before normal, uh, full retirement age, normal retirement age. Um, same, sorry, use those interchangeably, full retirement age and normal retirement age, meaning the same thing. But there are some links there to go ahead and take a look if that is going to affect you. And do keep an eye on those because that's what, what the amounts you can make in 2017, those will change. Okay. All right, so what counts as income? Um, so wages, net earnings from self-employment. But what doesn't count are investment earnings. Um, I could uh, pensions, annuities, capital gains. So those types of things you can have, they're considered income. The IRS certainly considers an income, but the Social Security Administration does not consider those things income. So those will not affect your um, Social Security retirement benefits. Okay, and this was a great uh, publication here. Um, you'll see how work affects your benefits. You might want to download that. And then um, it gives an example here if you earn and collect um, Social Security retirement benefits. Um, and it's just giving examples. Uh, again, the moral here is that if you're before full retirement age, then and you're collecting um, Social Security, and you make above these limits, the limit, you'll you'll have a reduction of benefits. And this really is a, gr a really good um, brochure because it does have some examples in it because this is all kind of confusing. Like if you turn this year, if you're turning this year, what it is. So an excellent publication to um, to do. And I'll actually go ahead and put that link into the chat box as well, just in case anybody else has, hasn't downloaded it, they can pull it out of the chat box. Yeah. And sometimes it's good to read this stuff a couple of times and then it, you know, it, it gets and look at it. So good, good um, recommendation. All right, so we were just discussing what about if you take benefits early. So now let's talk a little bit about normal receipt of benefits, because remember we had that receive it early, receive it at normal retirement age, or delay. So now let's in, let's explore a little bit normal receipt of benefits. And that depends on your birthday, uh, birth date. So do consult that chart, that chart. And you know, here it is again. <laughs> so um, I, I did put that there again, just so you could take a look at that chart and see where, where, um, where you fall. All right. So you can delay receipt of benefits, um, and you can do that up until age 70. And why would you want to do that? Because your benefit increases each year you delay taking benefits. So, um, and you can receive a bonus of up to 8%. They call it a bonus, but you get your benefit increases 8%. And we'll show another little chart. Up to, and it says up to 8%, because again, exactly by what percentage it increases each year, again, depends on your year your year of birth date because they tied this to when they raised the age they also it also had an effect on the credit but you can delay up to age 70. So here is that chart uh, again find your year of birth and see the yearly rate of increase note that that is based on a monthly rate of increase the calculation is done based on a monthly calculation um, so see that, and for folks 1943 or later, it is an 8% yearly rate of increase based on the um, monthly calculation there. Um, and here I put in a little note, especially because we, we just had a Medicare webinar and we, we 
we may do another one. So when you do complete your evaluation, you know, tell us what you think, tell us topics you're interested in, because we're considering doing another one. We have an excellent speaker from Shine, and we're hoping she may join us again if, if folks seem to want another one. Um, so, but I'm saying here, if you do delay um, Social Security retirement, don't forget about Medicare enrollment. You can do that three months before age 65. Um, and you might want to consider doing that. So um, you'll want to take a look at that website if you're approaching that age, but still not collecting retirement, uh, Social Security retirement benefits. Okay, um, I don't know if we should try this example now. What do you think, Julie, or should we wait? Maybe we'll come back to this Well, later. it's only 1224, so you've got some time. Okay, so it's just a and little... A nice, and it is a nice little It's a little chart. chart. Um, Oops. Hmm. But I don't have it there. Okay. Let's see. Let me just try to. It's a little chart. And again, there's lots of nice little calculators. I, I recommend um, taking a look at the um, at your own and not just. Um, so here's a chart. Um, and not just rely on these. These are easy ways to kind of take a look at them. But I also highly recommend that you sign up for your own statement and take a look. All right, so let's see. We could we can play with this um, and see what effect, um, ha what, what date if we take our benefits. So here it's set up to take our benefits at age 65, which for this person, they would be a little early. So you, you put in, and you can put in any variables. What do you think, Julie? Should we leave this or we'll try it this one first? All right. So it tells when you would reach normal retirement age. In this person's case, their birth date 6-15-1960. It would be June of 27. That's the year they turned 67. Um, if they choose, and this is showing that they're going to do it, oh, uh, 18 months in advance, a year and a half in advance. So your benefit will be 90% um, of your primary insurance amount. That's the way they calculate the benefit when they say that. Um, we're not going to go into how they calculate it, but it's the, your, what your benefit would be. So it's going to be 90%. So let's say if they took it, um, let's say if they went even earlier when they reached 62. So what's that? 40, uh, 2000, like 2012? 22. 22, thank you. <laughs> Okay. I know. Years. I was in here doing the math too. Okay. So if they do it at 62, very early, their benefits, they're receiving it 54 months before you reach it, your benefit will be 72%. So it'll be, their benefit will be reduced quite a bit, quite significantly. So 30, just under 30%. So they'll get 72.5% of their benefit. So about 27.5% of their benefit goes away. So again, there's lots of different calculators you may want to explore on that website. And so one way that you could think about using it, when you download your specific report off the Social Security, it'll tell you what your benefits are going to be if you take it at 62, what if you take it at your um, your normal retirement age. And so if you're thinking of somewhere in between that, you can use that chart to take the amount, the full amount that you'd receive at normal retirement and then find the percentage and use it to calculate, say you thought you might want to retire when you're like 63 and a half or something like that. So you can help, you can use it to help tweak it when you're doing your budget to figure out what it is that you might want to live on. This can be helpful to use. Yeah, yeah, good point. Thanks. Okay, all right. Um, now we'll talk a little bit about spousal benefits. Um, and you can and understand that you can collect, it would be nice to be able to collect both, or a little, but you collect either a benefit under your own work record or that of your spouse, whichever is greater. And the spousal benefit is one half of the worker's benefit. So if you have a spouse and I want, you know, it's good for you both to keep an eye on it. Or what would the spousal, you know, keep an eye on both the benefits, but know that the spousal benefit is one half of the worker's benefit. If you start spousal uh, sorry again, a little mistake here. If you start spousal benefit benefits before the normal retirement age or the full retirement age, the benefit is reduced for this for for both spouses. So just know it's half of the worker's benefit, and there's lots more information there for you to take a look at. 
Okay, now here's some information. Again, there are survivor's benefits. Um, Social Security was designed to help the worker and the worker's family. Um, here's a lot of information, but um, just information for you to take a look at. Uh, a widower or widower can receive benefits at age 60 or older. Know that you can receive the benefits, but it is going to be um, reduced. If someone is disabled, they can start at age 50. Um, and at any age, if somebody is taking care of a child of the deceased who is younger than age 16, so it is 16 or disabled. So while, and, and there is that, while the children are in the home, the, the one parent is taking care of the children, there are social security benefits, but then um, once the child is 16, there there is no, um, they won't receive any more benefits until age 60, and at that time will be reduced benefit. If somebody is divorced, um, they can, but they were married for 10 years, um, they can still, and they have not remarried uh, again, they can still receive benefits um, um, under the workers, their, their former spouse's work record. And again, the rules there. I would go ahead and if, if that situation applies to you, go ahead and take a look at that page um, and see. Um, to take a look at that. And here again, it shows you spousal benefits. And um, if you wait until full retirement age, you'll get 100% of your benefit amount. Um, age 60 to full retirement, a uh, decreased percentage. And the different, if caring for a child, 75%. Um, so again, take a look at that. And an interesting to note here parents um, who were dependent on the um, on the child, and if it's a deceased, their child. And again, dependent, that means they were dependent, they were providing for their support. Um, then, um, and there were probably, I didn't exact rules, but there are certainly rules in regards to who you depend, who is considered dependent on your, um, on your, to the IRS. So be careful of that, because just because you do provide some support to a parent does not mean they are your dependent. The IRS rules are if that you provide more than half their support, uh, or in most let's let's put it this way, they don't provide more than half their support, um, and you could have different. So if if you need the exact rules, let me know. We'll look those up. But um, if they're providing more than half their support, they're generally not considered a dependent. Um, um, and again, this there is if it's a divorced spouse, um, there are you can collect. Um, under survivor's benefit, even though divorced, um, if the other, you know, the marriage was for 10 years. Um, there may also be a special lump sum death payment of $255. And again, more information there. Take a look at that link. Okay. Um, survivor, a couple things to note. If the worker started receiving full retirement, excuse me, if the worker started receiving retirement benefits before their full, full retirement age, um, so the worker starts receiving their benefits before retirement age, let's like say 62, um, then Social Security will not pay the full retirement benefit to the survivor. Um, it's, it's limited to what they would receive if the worker was still alive. So if the, uh, a person retires, um, and then and they start retirement benefits early, say 62, 63, and so they're getting a reduced retirement amount. Then they pass away while they're receiving benefits. The survivor would receive that amount. Um, they would not bump up to the full retirement uh, amount that they would have gotten. Um, so, and one thing to note, if a person receives widower benefits and will qualify for a retirement benefit that's more than this, their survivor's benefit, they can switch to their own retirement benefit uh, as early age 62 or as late as age 70. So, in other words, you can start and receive your widower's benefit, and then you can del delay getting your benefit and um, take your benefit at a later time. 
those rules are very complicated. So the Social Security Administration says, give them a call, talk to them, talk to a financial advisor who is familiar with Social Security, um, who, who, you know, really understands retirement planning. Um, and just so a little recap here. Um, a widow or widower's benefit is based on the deceased worker's record. So what the deceased worker would have received at their normal retirement age. If the deceased worker did not receive did start, did not start receiving benefits early, they get the full benefit. If the deceased filed before their normal retirement age, they receive a reduced benefit. And then also you have to consider the 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 living uh, spouses if they um start that benefit before their normal retirement age, then the benefit can be reduced. You can file for survivor's benefits and then switch to your own. Um, so uh, re do your research before choosing an option. Okay. All right. And again, I'm, I'll just go back to the slide for a second because it's important. Go ahead and if that does apply to you, take a look at that. The charts there, ask questions. I know you can, you can contact the Social Security Administration. Uh, their website is ssa.gov. Um, social, and you can certainly just Google Social Security Administration. That really is your source for information. You can talk to a live person. It does take a while, though, on hold, um, but um, you can get additional information. All right, a little information. I get this talk a lot about this about tax time. I get folks who wonder if they're receiving Social Security, do they even have to file their taxes? So if your only income is Social Security retirement benefits, you will not pay federal income taxes um, unless you've had money withheld for any reason. Um, you you don't you don't have to you don't pay. You don't need to file. But if you have other income, you may have to pay federal income taxes on up to 85% of your benefits. Um, and they're taxed at the ordinary rate. It's just as receiving uh, income. Um, and we'll show a little example here of this. Um, and this is a good thing, as Julie said, to kind of factor into your calculations. And sometimes good to work with um, someone who's knowledgeable, uh, an accountant or advisor that can help you uh, plan accordingly. So for Social Security, it's the, the limits, and I'm saying combined income because when we flip ahead to this slide, if you have to pay income taxes, it's going to depend on your combined income. So to flip back to this slide, your combined income is defined as your adjusted gross income, which you can find that number on your 1040 form on the bottom of your 1040, your adjusted gross income plus non-taxable interest. So what they do is they say, your adjusted gross income, we're not going to count um, non-taxable interest, such as interest earned from municipal bonds or things like that. But we're going to put that back in for your combined income for your Social Security to see, to see if it's taxable, plus one half of your Social Security benefit. And that's your combined income. And notice there again, it's one half of your Social Security benefits. So you add this up and you'll find out what your combined income is. Currently, if a single individual has a combined income of less than $25,000, their benefits will not be taxable. Um, up to, but if it's 20, if they're single and they, their other income, um, pensions, um, you know, investment income. If that is between twenty-five thousand and thirty-four thousand, up to fifty percent of their Social Security benefit may be taxable. If it's greater than thirty-four thousand, up to eighty-five percent may be taxable. And here you'll see um, married filing jointly, the combined income. Again, it's married filing jointly, so it's based on the income, all income from both. Um, and again, though, remember, it's one half of Social Security benefits. But so if folks are joint and they're making under 32000 from um, pensions, annuities, investments, um, then under 32000 none of the Social Security will be taxed. 32 to 44, 50% of the Social Security benefits may be taxable. And if it's greater than 44000 up to 85% of the benefit may be taxable. 
marrying, filing separately, likely to pay taxes on that. Now, what and what you can do, what you'll see is if you look on your 1040, you'll see there's a place to put in Social Security earnings, ta income, Social Security income, and then on the right, far right side, there's taxable Social Security income. So, and the wonderful thing is now the software makes the calculation so easy. You can do a worksheet, or you can buy a software program that hopefully that that should be act. Uh, taxable and it'll just figure that out for you. This is the total Social Security income and then it'll show um, the amount of it that's going to be taxable. Okay, um, just a note here because there was a, a best-selling book that was out and it talked a lot about file and suspend <laughs> and interestingly um, not in the book was around and then they had a Budget Act of 2015 and they eliminated the file and suspend strategies for married couples. Um, so just know that if you see people talking about that file and suspend for married couples, um, and I'm not going to go into it, but well, just quickly, it was just you, um, one spouse would say, okay, I'm going to take my benefit, um, but no, not really, I'm just going to suspend it. The other spouse could get the spousal benefit and then meanwhile the the retired workers benefit continues to to build up it, it doesn't work that way anymore they that was gone um, and they affected are effective immediately for individuals who turn 62 on or after June 2nd 2016 um, but you may still see references to it on the website know that that is no longer and I put another thing about, you know, certainly you can, like we said, hold off until age 70. You can suspend your, uh, not wait a while so your benefits grow. And here's just, I'm just putting this, um, but just for completeness and to let you know um, if you voluntarily suspend your benefits, it, it will have effect on the others who receive benefits. So just know this, just look at this information because this was quite a big change this Budget Act of 2015, it was quite a, quite a change. Um, and the reasoning they said was it was to make, to um, cut down a loophole, eliminate a loophole, and um, make Social Security more sustainable. Um, okay, so again, considerations. Um, hopefully, you've got some information here to take a look. Understand that um, it depends on your circumstance. If somebody tells you, it's not a quick, easy question. Like Julie said, it's great. Take a look, get your statement, play with the calculators. If you have a spouse, talk to your spouse. Um, keep track of your other assets. Um, keep track of the rate of return they are earning. Um, the, the general, general, general thinking is that if you're in this environment, we're not earning, investments is not earning as much as they did in the old days. So delaying um, Social Security and let, letting those build up at 8% a year is gonna give you a bigger return than you're likely to return, get on investment assets. Now, I said generally, likely, um, how long you live is the big question. Um, and again, these are tough questions, but it just, you know, we do the best we can, get informed and then make, make that. And again, do you play, plan to continue to earn income, um, the earnings test. Um, but I know in studying all this and researching all this, it certainly changed my attitude. My my opinion was always, as soon as I can, I'm going to retire <laughs> um, and I'm going to get those Social Security benefits. And now I've just fully realized that it's not that easy a calculation. You really do want to sit down and think about it. And, and I think... Um, what Julie mentioned about creating a budget, taking a look at your situation, that's really, that's very important. Okay, with that, I see that we have finished early. Um, if I did go too fast, um, maybe I should add, I think I've thought of a couple questions perhaps that I will add to the evaluation, but we do need, um, and again, when to receive, start receiving retirement benefits, a great publication to start. Um, and download that publication and take a look. And uh, don't forget about the short evaluation that will be sent following the webinar. Um, I think um, we'll ask um, about PACE and see um, 
you know, let us know if there are topics you'd like, um, if what you need, because I think we're going to explore. I know retirement is something important, very important to me. So we will be exploring more topics along this line as well. Um, so I know I, I would like to have a nice, happy retirement. <laughs> so if you have any questions, go ahead and chat those in. And don't forget about the re the thing. And Julie, any mom, um, any comments? No questions yet. Please do. And I do know. I mean, this is certainly a complex um, topic. And so, as and as Lisa mentioned, a the rules change from year to year. That you go way one, along one way, and then suddenly there's a new rule made. So certainly do make sure that you're looking at the most recent information and looking at the website. Just because you find a book from five years ago that says that this is the way to do something doesn't mean that's the way it's going to be now. And 